the deadliest wildfire in more than 100 years, a whole city destroyed, generations of Native Hawaiian history turned into ruin. I've spoken to Governor Josh Green multiple times and reassured him the state will have everything it needs from the federal government. President Biden says he plans to visit Hawaii to see the wildfire damage for himself in the coming days. Meanwhile, the number of victims from the Maui wildfires keeps rising. At least 99 are now confirmed dead, with close to 1,000 still missing. 500 families who lost their homes have been moved to hotels, but there is growing concerns about long-term recovery. Tonight, one of those people who lost everything, a native New Mexican, is sharing what it was like in the middle of all that chaos and why she's thanking somebody very special for getting out safely. Tamara Lopez caught up with her today. And Tamara, she tells us, you know, she traded the land of enchantment for what's usually paradise in Hawaii. Yeah, Tessa, and the woman I spoke to says she's made Maui her home for almost a decade, but now she doesn't even have a home to go back to. I literally saw two houses just burning up with fire. And at that point, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is really bad. We gotta get out of here. Chantelle Katnak is describing the moment she saw her city was up in flames from her balcony. And she says her three-year-old son, Keanu, is who helped them make it out safely. She says he noticed the smoke first. No, mom, you can't go to sleep. You gotta wake up, mom. Please don't go to sleep, mom. He just kept saying that. Wake up, mom, wake up. He just would not let me go to sleep. And the intensity in his voice was different. Katnak has lived in Maui for the past six years, trading in her Santa Fe home for Lahaina. But instead of paradise, she describes the fire as apocalyptic. It's been a few days since they escaped the flames, but reality is just setting in for them. Like last night, my son was having nightmares. He was waking up in the middle of the night crying and sweating, and like, like and, and I know it's from the trauma. She says she's one of the hundreds who got no evacuation warning. No alarm system system went off for the whole town to evacuate. Like, that could have saved hundreds and hundreds of lives. Katnak says if she'd spent a minute longer just packing a bag, she may not have survived. She says her building quickly went up in flames. And for now, she and her son are staying with a friend on the other side of the island. Katnak says she lost everything material, but gained a new perspective on life. There's no time to have any quarrels. There's no time to judge. There's no time for unforgiveness. This is a time to love people and to, to help in any way possible. And she also wanted to add that she's very, very thankful to all the friends and family that reached out to check on her. And one of the most frightening parts of this all was not even being able to contact people during the fire to let them know that she was okay. Back to you. you know, our hearts are with her, and uh, her resilience is amazing at this mm -hmm. point. Tamara, thanks for sharing her story.